the horror of the occult we've heard so many stories about the occult some people believe that they are exaggerated some other people believe that the occult they work with dark spirits whatever your belief is leave it in the comment section welcome back mystery lovers so today we are going to be talking about the young man that decided he was going to join the occult and what happened after all. So we're going to call this man Jake because this is a true life story and as at this time I'm telling the story he is still much well alive. So Mr. Jake comes from a small community. His father was a hard working man. He was wealthy. He had farms. He worked very hard to make sure that his children will not have the type of life he had while growing up. Over the years, he made a lot of money and decided to marry a wife. Him and his wife, they had about eight or nine children before Mr. Jake. Mr. Jake was actually the last child. So Mr. Jake had like elder sisters and brothers that were old enough to be his parents. Okay. Their father decided to send each and every one of them to school. You have to go to school. It is not your choice. You don't decide. You have to go to school. You have to go to university and study something. So all his elder siblings, brothers and sisters, they went to school. They all studied good courses. They came out. Some of them were even working already. When it got to the time for Mr. Jake to go to the university, it was left, it was Mr. Jake and his direct elder brother that were left in the university. The rest of their siblings were out of the university and had good jobs. Now, while growing up, for some reason, Mr. Jake's mom preferred him. So she treated him better than the rest of his siblings. If he goes out, comes back late, or she asks him to do something, he doesn't do it. She would just, ah, okay, he's a small boy, he's just growing up. But if any other sibling would do the same thing, she would scold them and discipline them. She was a teacher. She taught in a primary school. So everybody in the community knew that he had this preferential treatment and his mom always talked about him. He was very smart. He was good in school. He came out with good grades. So when it was time for him to go to the university, it was not strange because it was expected from him. When they sent him off to the university, when Jake got there, instead of him to focus and study like his elder brothers and sisters, this, um, Jake decided to join one of the cults in the school. Now that school is known to be one of the most notorious with cultism and all this occultic kind of lifestyle. They always have their rivalry, they fight, they murder people, they behead people, they do all sorts of horrific things. So when he got to the school, he decided to join the occult and he just didn't join it for maybe the fun of it or what he might have heard about them. But he went in with all full force. He was devoted. He walked his way to the top where he was called the Don. Now, I cannot say the full name. There's a word that comes before that. But you know, I cannot say that because these are true stories and we have people that you understand what I mean. So he walked his way up to where he was called the Don. He will go to school dressed in outrageous attires, attires that you cannot wear, but nobody was bold enough to confront him. He kept up this lifestyle up until when he was about to graduate. That was when everything turned. According to the story that came from people that went to the same school from him up till date, he has never said the reason, but these are stories that came from people that went to the same school with him, that lived in the same area with him. They said it got to a point where he had to do one more sacrifice for him to before he leaves the school. That is what they do. This time, they asked for the head of his mother. He had to sacrifice his mother. He had to shed her blood. Now, if you remember earlier, I told you that Mr. Jake and his mom were the closest in their family. 
his mom pampered him treated him right and everything and i don't know if i mentioned that after some years their father died so the mother was left with all the children she had to raise all these children she continued to treat mr jake as if he was the only child she had all the siblings accepted the fact that this is what it's going to be our mom prefers our younger brother maybe because he's the last child or she just prefers him now mr jake is a good looking young man he was tall dark with a very nice face well built you know he had the style he was smart and everything so the ladies loved him ladies would always hang around him and all of that his mom didn't see anything wrong his elder brothers were not allowed to bring women to the house but even as young as he was he was able to do all those things and get away with it so he loved his mom and his mom also loved him there was no doubt about that so when he was asked to sacrifice his mom he said no that anything else they ask of him he would do now mind you this part of the story was not narrated by him because up till date he has refused to say the truth of what happened so after a while people started noticing that he was acting strange he would be talking to himself he started acting as if he's seen things so he uh, was behaving like someone that was mentally deranged if i would use that word so then they sent for his family people to come and take him from school and see what they can do so his elder ones went and took him took him to the hospital they checked him uh, the psychiatric hospital uh, psychiatric hospital they checked him and nothing was wrong with him from everything they said he he is okay that like they cannot see anything that is wrong with him but everybody could see that he was not okay because you cannot be talking to yourself uh walking aimlessly just doing strange things that no other person around you can understand but medically they said he was fine completely okay they took him back to school he was okay for a while attending his classes remember now i told you it was close to when he was going to graduate so he had like final exams to write and all those all, all those things you do before you leave the university after some weeks they sent for them again to come and take him that it's getting worse he's becoming aggressive so they went back and took him now this time they took him down to the village to his mom so he stayed in the home with his mom he was still acting kind of strange but he could he could talk with you if you try to talk to him he still recognizes people he says hello good morning friends and all of that but he was acting strange so his mom decided she was going to take him to a spiritual house like like a, a church a prophet so they can help him uh when the mother decided to take him to a prophet his elder ones refused because they said a prophet will not help that what he needs it's medical help but then the mother said you people took him to your medical stuff and they said nothing is wrong with him let me take him to the spiritual part and let us see what is going to happen if nothing happens then i will allow you people to take him again to maybe another hospital in a different city and all of that so the elder one said okay the mom took mr jakes to the prophet but one thing she did was she refused to tell his siblings, his relatives, his uncles and everybody she refused to tell them the location of where he was. Every time they would ask him where is he, uh, ask her where is he, where is Mr. Jakes, the mom would say he is okay, he is responding to treatment, he is calm, he doesn't talk to himself anymore, but the prophet said we still need to leave him there for a while. After some times, it was now over a month plus and counting, they've not seen him. They felt like something was not right. The mom was not telling the truth. So they started mounting pressure on her. And then she said to them that this is her child and that she's not going to allow them to take him to all these, their so-called hospitals. Even though this lady is educated, remember I told you she is a primary school teacher. But... I don't know why she felt like going to medical stuff was not the right thing for her son but yeah it's her son right so her siblings the siblings mr jake's siblings tried to battle with their mom but 
they could not find him because nobody knew the location only the mom knew the location of where he was so they let it be after some months she kept going from their village she would prepare people would see her traveling with foodstuffs and all of that she would not be back for some weeks and then she would come back and so people knew she was visiting him but she said he was getting better but she didn't want to allow people to see him not knowing that he was not really getting better but because she had so much faith on this prophet and what the prophets they do and she did not want to believe that her son was a member of a cult and this cult they have such certain rituals that they do with blood and if you know something the human blood has power you know so when you shed blood you drink blood you do all these things with blood incantation and all those things there, there is more to it than the ordinary eyes could see so then one day one fateful day she left the house packed her bags boosters just as she has done for the past few months to go visit her son she was going she would the day she was leaving so many people in the community saw her she, she was walking to the bus stop where she's going to take a bike to the main junction and from that main junction she's going to join uh, a vehicle like a bus that is going to wherever she was going that's how people travel out from that community they the, you have to take a bike that's a motorcycle and then the motorcycle will take you to the junction and then from there you you get the vehicles buses taxis and everything to go to wherever you want to go to so when she was leaving people asking her oh, what uh, where are you going she said i'm going to visit my son and all of that people wished her well uh we hope he gets better and everything she said thank you she was full of life smiling greeting people as she was walking toward the junction as people that saw her that day narrated she left went to wherever hidden location that she had her son and then when she arrived there according to the story that came from the prophet and the people that worked for him just this is what they narrated that when she arrived there that day before she came he has been acting very strange trying to fight with them trying to attack anyone that came to his room that they had to restrain him with chains you know they use this heavy chains to to tie him not i'm not talking about handcuffs they use chains and padlock to chain his legs and arms down so when his mother came and saw that she was furious that why would they treat her son like an animal why would it that they should uh release him they should untie him the people there told her how aggressive her son was but she refused and said they should set her son free right now right this moment as she wants to take him away so the man said okay we're going to untie him we're going to remove the chain but we still have to restrain him somehow she said no so they reluctantly removed the chains and everything she went to talk to him they said he was a bit calm when he saw his mother she was talking to him he was responding she made food for him he ate and she was there with him so she decided that she was going to sleep there that day something that she had never done she does. every time she goes to visit him she stays with him but she never sleeps in the same room with him they don't allow her to do that because they don't trust what he can do so then when she decided to do that the prophet or the man that is in charge said to her that is not going to be possible because your son is very aggressive and we do not know what he can do and her response was my son can never ever hurt me so after so many arguments of you know back and forth of don't do it i'm going to do it don't do it i'm going to do it they just gave up and said okay we will see you in the morning and she said the next day she was going to take her son away from that place because she was at this point she was really still furious that they had to restrain her son with chains so she said the next day she's going to take him away from there to somewhere else so they said good night to her she was there with him he was calm they said the last time they saw him he was just sitting on uh, sitting down there on the floor and she was talking to him and they went to bed when they woke up the next morning to come and see him everything had changed 
As the prophet knocked on the door, expecting the mom or him, Mr. Jakes, to open the door, they knocked and knocked, nobody responded. So they forced the door open and what they saw was so horrific that they backed out the first time, had to collect themselves before they entered the room again. Mr. Jake had killed his mother with an axe. Now, the cult that Mr. Jake belonged to, it is known that this axe is one of their favorite weapons that they use when they are trying to commit murder or do their so-called rituals. Mr. Jakes hacked his mother to death. She was beyond recognition. Most of the attack was on her face and her neck region. And Mr. Jakes was nowhere to be found. Wait for the continuation.